11 Scientifically Proven Strategies for Winning an Argument That You Should Know Arguing is something that many people want to stop. Arguments, on the other hand, can be used for good, they can educate, sharpen thought, and question old ideas in significant ways. The expert advice given in this video will help you argue more effectively, increasing your chances of winning the debate. Of course, winning means different things to different people, so not all of these ideas are about convincing someone that you are correct. Before we dive deeper into this, please help us build this community by clicking the like button, subscribing and clicking the notification bell because we want to create more videos for you to enjoy. 11 Scientifically Proven Strategies for Winning an Argument That You Should Know 1. Determine the nature of the discussion. Understanding the essence of a dispute. According to Mark Poravecchio, a professor of rhetoric and a debate coach at Oregon State University, will help you decide how to approach it best. Argument types differ depending on meaning, and, genre, he explains to Mental Floss. What works when arguing with a significant other should not work when debating with a coworker. The intention is to be aware of the situation you are in, and to be able to modify your strategy in response to a variety of situational factors. You should change your tone, and even the substance of your argument, depending on who you're arguing with and where you're having it. A conversation in a private setting can vary from one in a public setting. According to Poravecchio, this technique is as old as debate itself, having been used by both the sophists and Aristotle. 2. Understand the opponent's personality type. Often you won't know what your adversary values or where they come from, but other times you will. Make use of the knowledge. According to Prince Guman, a professor at Hult International Business School and co-author of the book Allure, the neuroscience of consumerism, most people are either reactive or analytical. Some people are more reactive than others, so you can persuade them by using tactics that relate to them, emotion and empathy, he tells Mental Floss. Others seem to be more deliberate, you must have analytical support for your point. 3. As well as moral identity different sides in political and ideological debates often have radically different perspectives on the world. Most people see society through six different binaries, according to the Moral Foundations Theory, a framework proposed by a group of social psychologists, care, harm, fairness, cheating, loyalty, betrayal, authority, subversion, sanctity, degradation, and liberty, oppression. A politically liberal individual, for example, may be more influenced by an argument that emphasizes compassion and justice, while conservatives may value loyalty and authority more. Individual will have a different understanding of which definition in each pair is more important, and knowing what the other side values will help frame the talking points in an argument. One reason it's so difficult to bridge the ideological gap is that people prefer to present their cases in a way that appeals to the ethics of their own side, rather than the ethics of their opponents, journalist Olga Kazan explained in an Atlantic video. You will win by framing your case to adhere to your opponent's moral code rather than your own. 4. Use emotion, but don't base the whole discussion on it. Arguing without emotion is not only difficult if you're a human being, but it's just not a good way to win. Every claim, including many apparently factual arguments, Poravecchio says, contains an emotional element. According to Sherry Campbell, author of Success Equations, a path to living an emotionally wealthy life, you should include feelings when making your case, but don't overdo it, particularly in professional settings. When it comes to personal disputes, it is often necessary to express unpleasant feelings, and while compassion is vital, so is honesty. Sometimes emotional arguments that cause depression can help people get to the heart of where the hurt and anger is, Campbell explains. Emotional arguments can be successful as long as the person you're arguing with has empathy and can prioritize caring over being right. Ideally, you should strive to maintain a sense of balance. A statement that is purely based on emotion should be viewed with caution, Poravecchio says. Feelings that lack facts or details fall flat if the other person cannot relate. 5. Make your case with emotionality. Connect with the listener by telling your story through the example of one person. Personify rather than generalize, suggests Guman. He cites University of Oregon psychologists' research that shows people would contribute more money to a person in need than to a group of people. This is due to the fact that most of us can empathize with a single person but find it more difficult to connect to groups in the same way. When arguing, use this strategy to your advantage by imagining, or finding, 
a particular individual who could benefit from what you're arguing for. For example, if you're arguing that Susan shouldn't be fined for parking her car in a tow zone because she was attempting to save a dog in the street, it's better to specify who she is. Rather than referring to her as, Susan, a dog owner, describe her as, Susan, who has adopted a mutt, a pit bull, and an elderly chihuahua. Empathetic data, on the other hand, should not be used in place of factual information, rather, they should be used to supplement the facts. 6. Make use of storytelling. Storytelling goes hand in hand with empathy and contextualizes evidence to help the point. Bring all of your knowledge together, empathy, evidence, and emotions, to tell a convincing tale, and your point will be more difficult to refute. When the argument seems to be part of a story arc, each component of what you're arguing becomes more difficult to pick apart. Do you need a template? Pora Vecchio suggests the TED format. I believe TED Talks have gained popularity because they often combine a level of detail and reality with a personable, narrative-driven delivery style, he says. 7. Use physical cues to influence the enemy. In social settings, people unconsciously imitate others, a trait that psychologists conclude is correlated with emotional attachment. Consciously imitating the opponent's stance and movement is another well-known tactic for winning others over to your side. If your opponent leans back, try leaning back or crossing your arms or legs as they do. Looking them in the eyes while listening to them talk is another way to undermine their trust in their own argument, and you'll seem stronger as well. According to this report, you can also lower your voice a notch to sound more dominant. 8. Keep calm. Maintain as much calm as possible when using or reacting to an analytic or emotional statement. The safest thing to do during an argument is to remain calm and speak slowly. You can't scream and speak slowly at the same time, Campbell says. Forcing yourself to speak slowly helps to hold your feelings in check and your thoughts rational. If that sounds difficult, it is. This requires a lot of discipline, but it's an easy thing to concentrate on. 9. Practice your presentation. Spending time arguing, like most other skills, will improve your performance. Debate in high school, college, or professional development can be seen as a way to learn arguing skills, according to Poravecchio. You focus on improving your methodology, material, and execution, and then apply what you've learned in real-world situations. Poravecchio claims that over time, his students have become not only better debaters, but also, better public speakers and critical thinkers. 10. Reschedule the debate. Not every point has to be about being right, which some people describe as winning. Even if you don't change their mind, you might consider it a win if your opinion is respected and heard by the individual with whom you disagree. Instead of using the word argument, use the conversation. If you're just having a conversation, winning is out of the question, and a constructive discussion will take place, Campbell says. 11. Walk away if anything else fails. It can get nasty at times, or the debate can seem to go in circles. If you're stuck in a debate, press your rival directly. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? If they say nothing can change their minds, trust them and walk away, Guman advises. It's okay if an argument ends in a tie. Guman adds that you've succeeded if you've learned something. A healthy argument will extend your viewpoint and open your mind. That is it for this video, we hope you find it valuable. Please help us build this community by clicking the like button, subscribing and clicking the notification bell because we want to create more videos for you to enjoy. See you again.